Thank you for watching Grassroots Television. Visit grassrootstv.org for on-demand community archive footage, as well as educational, inspiring, and entertaining local programming. Your contribution allows us to bring a voice to the valley and to preserve media that has been a part of the community since 1972. Visit grassrootstv.org and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Twitter. The following program, Letting the Stranger In, is generously underwritten by the Jewish Community Center Shabbat in Aspen, as well as the Fund for Interfaith Understanding. Enjoy, and again, thank you for tuning in to Grassroots Community Network. And now, Dr. Khalil Mohammed. I deliberately did not prepare a written address because that would have worked on the understanding that I had something I needed you to know. But over the last few days, I knew full well that I would hear much that would possibly change my mind. And it is with this in mind now, based on some of you who are sitting here, you have influenced me so much that I give my presentation. This symposium is called Encountering the Stranger. And for those of us, at least there are some of us who remember why it was so named, from the book edited by Lenny Grob and John Roth, that we speak of the story in Genesis of Abraham encountering the strangers at Mamre. When he saw these strangers, he, list, he did not try to build a wall between himself and them. He asked not who they were. Instead, he greeted them with honor. And as the Bible tells us, he prepared for them the fatted calf. Over the last few days, we have used this religious trope between Muslims, Christians, and Jews with this shared story. We have used religion to show how we should treat the stranger. But you see, among us, I listened to John Paulikowski, and something he said influenced me greatly because it resonated with a part of my own scripture that I often wish I could overlook. John Paulikowski told us that religion is often a source of evil. Scott Appleby talks about something in a similar vein that he calls the ambivalence of the sacred. You see, institutional religion in particular, Abrahamic institutional religion in particular, has this thing that we call conflict dualism. The incompatibility between good and evil. And for most of us, Evil is something, it is a matter of perception. Our institutional religions often tell us that the other is the evil one. And this is how it becomes a source of evil. My tradition in the Quran, there is a verse that tells me, and the verse basic, in a paraphrase basically states, be upholders of righteousness, witnesses for justice, even if it be against yourselves, your parents, or your relatives. As a Muslim, I am part of a larger group that we are observed and we feel oppressed and alienated, ostracized in society at large. And here is where I turn this discussion in its head a bit. We we're talking about letting the strangers in. The stranger is often perceived as the visible other. Sometimes, if we truly want to make religion good, we have to create that stranger. Based on one of the, what one speaker told us this morning, sometimes being a stranger is praiseworthy. How so? Because you see when your religious tradition in its institutional construct presents to you things that are not right. You have to make yourself a stranger to that. 
We used Abraham in his concept of welcoming the stranger. I too now use Abraham in creating that stranger. You see, when the visitors inform Abraham, or in some traditions it says God tells Abraham that God is going to destroy two cities, Abraham is perplexed because in the cities they also had righteous people. And his question was, remember this is supposedly coming from God, that cities are going to be destroyed. And Abraham's question was, but was in those cities there are righteous people too. Will you destroy the righteous with the evil? Abraham confronted God about this. My point is that in my own tradition, there are so many constructs that I find myself often willingly estranging myself making strangers of my co-religionists because certain things I will not accept. In this case, I say, I don't want to let that stranger in. I want to create that stranger and keep him out. Simple example. Again, referring to Scott Appleby's ambivalence of the sacred. Many of my co-religionists, many Christians, many Jews to follow in scripture will extend the last grain of rice that they have to the so-called stranger, smiling as they do it, because it is an order from God, but with the same smiling visage, they will also kill that stranger if they feel that there is some religious exhortation that he suddenly becomes evil. That is a problem for me. That is when we have to have the strength to know when to welcome a stranger, when to let that stranger in, or when to create a stranger out of that which we hold dear to us. In short, that is all I wish to say. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching Grassroots Television. Visit grassrootstv.org for on-demand community archive footage, as well as educational, inspiring, and entertaining local programming. Your contribution allows us to bring a voice to the valley and to preserve media that has been a part of the community since 1972. Visit grassrootstv.org and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, and Twitter. The following program, Letting the Stranger In, is generously underwritten by the Jewish Community Center Shabbat in Aspen, as well as the Fund for Interfaith Understanding. Enjoy, and again, thank you for tuning in to Grassroots Community Network.